I must first offer my thanks to Dr. Paras Shah and Ajayan Varghese, who were kind enough to call me up and ask me to be the chief guest for today's program. And I'm thankful to them in special and to all the members of the Indian Association of Sexual Medicine Practitioners, Modern Medicine. And I wish them good luck and the best in life academically. Now, perhaps sexual medicine is the most nascent of all branches of medicine. And that is why our medical council with now the National Medical Commission they are still sleeping over it. For information, it will take at least another 15 years for those bodies to recognize sexual medicine as a real good subject and allow us to hold a diploma degree in this. But even diabetes was recognized recently only. And there is no official recognition for reproductive medicine, which has advanced leaps and bounds. There's a shade of affairs. But anyway, doesn't matter. Who should learn all the modern developments in all the fields? And those of us who are interested in sexual medicine should update themselves. Now, Dr. Ajayan rightly said, there are more quacks practicing in this field. Let us question why. I am also a member of Indian Medical Association. We also have a committee called Quackery Eradication Committee. What is that we are able to do? Not a campaign, maybe arrest one person or two person, that's all. You cannot prevent the multitude. I'm not justifying them. First, let's understand why people go to them. If you have sufficient money, you will go to UDP hotel or some star hotel and have your lunch or breakfast. If you don't have sufficient money or these hotels are not available, people will go to a tea shop and have biscuits and tea. Since we qualified medical practitioners were not available till recently, people were forced to go to the quacks. Pains me to make the following statement. When I use the word quack, I want you to remember that we have two types of quack among us. One is a qualified quack, that means MBBS graduate who does not update himself but still claims wonders with whatever knowledge he's got, and unqualified quacks. And the qualified quacks are unpardonable. That is why I am very glad that the Indian International Association of Med Sexual Medicine Practitioners have really taken up this task of updating and creating knowledge among this body of qualified MBBS doctors. Long back, when I was a student, I had to read the textbook of venereology by Doyen of Venereology, Dr. R. V. Rajan. One specific sentence really lives in my memory. What is that? He says, the key to diagnosis is observation and interrogation. I am glad our first webinar starts with history taking by a renowned sexologist, Dr. Raj Brambhat. Raj Brambhat is my colleague. We both worked together in many platforms and has got vast experience. I'm sure the participants will benefit by this lecture. I would like to caution all of us on one thing. I've noted that this is happening in international bodies. Way back, Rambat may remember there was only one international organization, namely the World Association of Sexology. Later on, after HIV-AIDS, it was converted into 
World Association for Sexual Health. Then today, we have a multitude. We have ISSM, we have for uh, uh, aging male, and we have for male health, et cetera, et cetera. And people who are making a mistake that sexual medicine means only prescribing medicines, giving injections, and doing surgeries. I would request all of you to remember the following. If we are to be a good and competent practitioner of sexual medicine, you should have some knowledge about sociology, psychology, and anthropology. Very simple. Why? Why do people behave in a particular manner? You must have an answer. When somebody comes to us with a sexual problem, why is that they are bothered? A 60-year-old man, 55-year-old man who had two grandchildren, lived his life, pays thousands and lakhs of rupees but to go to quacks and buy the so-called gold dust, what we call in Tamil, Angabasmam, and spoil their own health. Why? Because it is not the act of sex alone but something in their manhood that is being lost. The relationship is a defective. So we have to understand that relationships are important. To understand that, we must understand the evolution of human behavior. So you must know something about anthropology. And our cultures, sociology, they are important on human psyche. I won't take much of your time. I will just narrate one incident which happened to me in personal life. Uh, this is to highlight that how quacks are ruling the roost. Long back, one urologist from a city called Tiruchi in Tamil Nadu referred a young couple to me. They have been married for six years and they didn't have a child and the marriage was being threatened. At that stage, they went to urologist there, and urologist referred the couple to me. Now, it goes without saying that the main cause is unconsummated marriage. Now, it took some time for me, almost six months, to counsel them. In those days, there was no PD5 inhibitors. So I had to depend only on education, counseling, and therapy. It took some time. Ultimately, they were able to consummate and the lady became pregnant. So the couple came to me with a box of sweets to thank me. After thanking me, they said, Sir, my grandfather wants to meet you. I said, once your case has become successful, there's no problem, anybody can see us. So I asked the gentleman to come in. The gentleman came with all arrogance and sat before me. And he asked me a question, Dr. Reddy, do you know me? I said, sorry, I don't know you. It's a fact. I don't know you. Then he asked me this question, Doctor, don't you read newspapers? Then it struck me because every single newspaper in Tamil and Tamil magazine, every day and every week, he advertises as great Palni Siddhavaidya. Palni is a pilgrim center in Tamil Nadu, very popular and very auspicious and well-renowned and reputed. He says world-renowned sexologist and people go to them. So when I realized who this man was, since he's sitting in my clinic, I couldn't insult him. So I politely asked him, sir, you are a world-renowned sexologist and why did you refer your grandchildren to me? He said, doctor, family is family, business is business. Your people are educated, but you do not know how to do business. And I had a doubt. Uh, sir, you advertise in paper that Monday you are in town A, Tuesday you are in town B, you are on Wednesday you are in town C, etc., etc. I am struggling to even sit in one place and practice. How are you managing Doctor is not difficult. 
it is because i don't go to every place magician goes in all places there are different towns where they have room in hotels lodges etc so then i said what how do you handle it no problem first question we ask have you made a mistake or do you have a bad habit every single person who came to us admitted they have a bad habit you know what the bad habit is so what we do is we give pills in a white color bottle regular transparent glass bottle how much you charge i asked 5000 rupees this was about 20 years ago i don't know what the cost today okay this is for mandalam days 40 days i ask them if they are not happy with 40 days not have uh, no relief they come back to you what do you do if they say they have become all right we give one more bottle and charge 5000 they say they are not all right we give them silver color bottle i ask how much 15000 rupees i said fine even if they don't become all right with that what do you do finally doctor we give a gold color bottle we say gold dust how much you charge we charge 25000 rupees and stupid me i asked him a idiotic question to him sir even after taking the tanga basma or gold dust we say he's out all right what do you say doctor you are not experienced after that they will never come back to us i will they come back 5 15 25 45000 they already spent where the money for them to come back to complain to you and that's what he clearly said dr reddy i want to give you a piece of advice because you help my grandchildren take it from me as elder person i have been reading all your articles you have been saying that masturbation is not harmful but probably every single client of yours has come to me do you think how many of them believed your word that masturbation is not harmful they all came to me then he said doctor you should never contest the beliefs straight away it is like hiv when it came we said the death warrant no treatment what happened they went to a radio engineer in kerala who claimed that is got a cure so never contest on the first visit you must listen to him give a patient listening and then gradually take him to your counseling etc etc so that's very important and i am sure that bambat will explain to you all the details and i am glad that the international association of sexual medicine practitioners have taken it upon themselves to really educate and update our fellow mbbs graduates in this new branch of medicine and i wish them all success i have only one request to ajay and parasha and others please go in a structured manner i have been seeing since 19 2020 practically every other day there is a webinar and it jointed somebody talks about gynecology somebody talks about diabetes somebody else talks about psychiatry etc but a newcomer how will learn a subject i can't be running to psychiatrist and i bid all this to learn so your monthly webinar should be structured in a systematic manner so by the end of one year or whatever it is they should be really competent enough to sit in their consultation rooms and do justice to their practice and bring good repute to our medical practitioner that is my humble request and i wish the international association all the best wish them and whatever help or guidance i can give please feel free to reach out to me i am at your service thank you very much thank you sir